Okay, so thank you everyone for joining. We will now start the webinar, just making sure at the end of the session we will have Q&A session, so feel free to ask questions during the webinar and we will answer towards the end of it. So, Hanan, let's start. Okay, thank you very much, Noah, and uh, hi everybody and welcome uh, to our webinar. As a matter of fact, this webinar is the first of a series of uh, four webinars that we are going to hold over the coming uh, four weeks, starting today. In general, uh, we at the DOC, we are staying loyal to our main charter, which is connecting the two ends together. On one hand, uh, the, the, the high-tech ecosystem. On the other end, the maritime uh, industry. However, we do address in those webinars the special times or the challenging times in which we are with the COVID-19 coronavirus. And, uh, and uh, on one hand, these are indeed challenging times, but as we all know, uh, it does pose opportunities which are evident in some uh, accelerated adoption of some technologies, as we know on the other side, on the other end. And uh, maybe the way we conduct this session on Zoom is such a generic example of acceleration in adoption of a technology. We try to identify the same uh, in, the, in the maritime industry as well. So uh, uh, we picked up four pairs of startup and corporate uh, to be featured over the four sessions. Uh, and uh, and uh, we use two main uh, selection criteria in order to pick up, literally handpick those uh, uh, four cases. Uh, first, we wanted to make sure, and this is the first criteria, we wanted to uh, uh, identify use cases which are likely uh, to be accelerated in terms of adoption in the market in the post-corona era. Uh, nobody knows how uh, the world is going to shape up, but this is going to be a new world. So the first criteria is relevance for the likely uh, relevance for the post-corona era. The second criteria is we all know there is an embedded challenge in the collaboration between startups and corporates. And uh, we try to identify cases in which there are already live in production implementations of the startup within a corporate. And we made it a point to invite representatives of both the startup side and the corporate side on the other end. Which brings me to the session that we hold today here. Uh, so I'm glad to present Zim and the Wave BL. Uh, an interesting such use case, and uh, we are going to discuss and deliberate the messages, the needs on one end and the messages which are delivered specifically in the context of the current days. With me today here as my uh, uh, co-members on the panel, I have uh, Eyal Ben Amram, who is the CIO of Zim, and uh, Gadi Rushin, who is a co-founder and CEO of Wave, Thank you very much, Eyal and Gabi, for joining me. And I'm going to ask you to first take a few minutes in order to introduce yourself and uh, describe your role within the organization. Why won't you, Eyal, go first with that? Okay, thank you, Hanan. So uh, my name is Eyal. I'm uh, the CIO of Zim and um, management member in Zim. Zim is a global company. Um, with uh, almost 100 agencies around the world, more than 4,000 employees. Our main uh, business is carry of um, goods um, over our ships. Uh, prior to Zim, I served in high-tech companies uh, such as Amdox um, and the digital printing and Cytex and Appearum Digital. I also served as a CEO and VP operation in two startups, so I'm familiar with the other side of being in a startup. One of them was in digital printing, later was sold to HP, and the other one was in the touch and pen of laptops, and later was sold to Microsoft. Um, so basically, I have experience being in the corporate side and in the startup side. Okay, thank you very much, Eyal, and uh, Gadi, you're next. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Hanan. So my name is Gadi Rushin. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Wave. Uh, Wave is, have created a digital courier which just takes original documents 
and allows full digitization of them. And uh, we are actually mirroring the way that the business works today, but in a fully electronic way. Um, prior to Wave, I used to manage a buying office or a sourcing agency, which means I used to be the eyes and the ears of different retailers in the garment industry in China. Uh, as a part of the family operation, we used to have also offices in Cairo, uh, in India, and of course, in Tel Aviv and China. Um, and before that, I was in the Air Force and uh, an airplane uh, engine engineer. Um, and thank you very much uh, for inviting me to this panel. That's great. And as a Navy person, we will not hold it against you, your Air Force uh, background. So, so thanks for that, Gabi. And I, I'm from the first background also. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Very good. So thanks for the intro, impressive background. And uh, let's start with what first first. Uh, so the topic that we're discussing today are trade documents, electronic trade documents. But let's, let's uh, uh, roll it back to the need, uh, to the need for any uh, improvement in the area of trade documents. And I'm going to ask you, Eyal, to, uh, to provide uh, Zim's perspective of uh, what is the need? Where is the pain with the way that this was actually happening over the last couple of decades? Okay, so um, Zim and me personally, we believe uh, that uh, we must move to a more uh, digital uh, way of working. Uh, you know, our industry is very, very uh, veteran industry. And some of the processes are already digital, but the, the main process, the main document in our industry is still a paper, regional paper. And that's create, you know, a lot of challenges to move to be fully digital. You still need to bring the paper, you still need to have a special printer, um, and you still uh, need to wait until uh, the delivery guy bring the paper, people are standing in line uh, at the deck uh, to get the bill of lading, etc., etc. Now, when we want to move to a fully digital, uh, speedy, and good user experience to our customer, this is a big barrier. So we do believe that uh, this is one of the biggest barrier left that we need to transfer to digital in order to improve time to market, to improve the user experience, to save money to the ecosystem because there are thousands of people on the motorcycle bringing the paper from one place to another, uh, and also to improve security. Um, on top of this, we believe also in the blockchain technology that Wave is using as technology is going to be dominant in the supply chain in the near future. Okay, very good. So thank you for that. So Gadi, you must be relieved to understand that there is a need in the market for that. And, uh, and obviously that need existed all along, maybe amplified yeah. these days, but it did exist all along. And uh, while people may think that uh, selling it is a walk in the park, I'm sure that uh, it's more than that. But why won't you provide us first with the highlights of the solution? In other words, how does WAVE attend to the need which was presented by AI? Yes, so first of all, uh, Eyal, by the way, we have the solution for all your problems. So just uh, contact us and we will, uh... <laughs> yes. Okay, um, where we are. <laughs> yes, so actually even to, to elaborate on, on what Eyal uh, mentioned, just to give you an, an a very, let's say, hot topic that just uh, was, was uh, placed on our desk today. Uh, so one of our major New Zealandian customers just told us uh, this morning, that the Indian government have blocked the ability of DHL uh, or, or UPS, I don't know exactly which courier they use, they blocked their ability to land in India, which means that goods have arrived, the ports are working, but nothing can be released because the plane with the documents cannot land. This is just to explain how weird the situation is. Uh, so WAVE is actually doing exactly that, which means that WAVE is using the blockchain technology in order to mirror or to mimic the exact same business flow which are happening today in paper format, which means that we are not taking a document and scanning it or anything like that. It's a fully digital environment, which means that we are fully integrated to uh, the tr transportation management system 
of the carrier and the different parties and allow them a direct exchange of the exact same document and based on the exact same flow, but in a fully digital uh, environment and, and a, a very simple user experience. Uh, now, specifically because of today's very weird or, or very uh, problematic business environment, so actually we have completely uh, uh, eliminated all barriers, which means that uh, today we are allowing a complete autonomous onboarding uh, and a very fast, uh, complete autonomous and very fast onboarding, which means that uh, in order to support the industry, we are doing our best together with great partners uh, in order to help and to solve all the different bottlenecks because what helps the business continuity today will of course last also after and the savings will last also for after today's uh, situation. Hanan, you are muted. Okay. Is it better now? Yeah. Okay. So thank you, Gadi. And uh, I understand, Eyal, that uh, Zim produced a short video that highlights the need and the, and the way the solution provides uh, for that need. So, uh, uh, Noah, we got that video. Can you please uh, play it? As coronavirus rampages through the world, and every physical encounter presents an imminent risk, it's time to go digital. Zim takes another step towards giving customers a digital experience. Paperless Trade is a new value-added service that enables you to issue, transfer, and validate your electronic bills of lading. As part of our continuous pursuit of innovation, we have collaborated with Wave, a digital courier platform provider that specializes in shipping industry processes. Zim customers can now enjoy the benefits of paperless trade. Stay safe and reduce unnecessary physical encounters. Save up to $50 per bill of lading and cut down on lengthy document verification processes, controlling and delivery costs. Transfer documents in minutes instead of days or weeks. Issuing and transferring documents can be as simple as sending an email now. There's no need to change the trade process. Manage your documents using one user-friendly digital platform. Forward your electronic bills of lading to relevant parties and attach soft copies of other trade documents to your virtual envelope. Prevent fraud and risk of document loss or misplacement. Maintain a sustainable process. Use less paper and minimize your carbon footprints. Shippers and consignees are relieved from registration, subscription, or transaction fees. The ZimWave Paperless Trade Collaboration. It's time to go digital. Okay, so impressive video, and I understand this was really Make us cry fast. every time, uh, over and over again. Say it again? I'm saying the video is so impressive, it makes us cry every time, uh, over and over again. And, and, and I understand it was, it was produced uh, just a few days ago, and, uh, yeah. and uh, placed uh, uh, on, uh, on the websites, on the relevant thing website, so good job on that. Uh, I would like for you to think both, uh, uh, Gadi and Eyal, if you have any, additional comments about evidence for accelerated interest given the corona uh, uh, era that we live in and what's expected. Uh, but think about that a second. Before that, I'd like to remind the audience that Q&A will be allowed uh, uh, at the end of the session, which is coming up in about uh, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, so please, if you feel that you want to ask anything and have the panel, any of the panel members relate to that, you can do that online with a, with the Q&A Zoom feature. So uh, uh, back to you, Eyal or Gadi. Anybody wants to add any additional observations? Again, evidence for potential acceleration of interest or increased interest given the current circumstances. Yes, of course. Um, uh, you know, we are trying to push uh, moving to this new technology um, for a um, few months already. 
And, uh, you know, we passed all the barrier, the technical barrier. We did invest in connecting Wave platform to Zim platform. Everything is, is, is okay. The problem was to get the attention of our salespeople to waste their time, kind of, by, by selling this solution uh, to our end customers. And uh, suddenly the corona came. Now we don't have to explain the real need. Now everybody understand what it is to be stuck because you cannot move the paper uh, in an electronic way. As Gandhi mentioned uh, today in New Zealand, uh, in India, what's happening? And it's happened all around. There is a problem now to print, to deliver, uh, to courier, and uh, the platform suddenly uh, sounds the, the perfect solution. So what happened that we did a very fast acceleration with our sales force. So if Wave has a very uh, professional sales team, but small, up to three people, now we have 300 people of the sales teams of Zim all over the world uh, selling this product to our end customers, understanding the need, no need to, you know, to convince them why they need it. Now everybody understands the need, the customers understand the need, this video is part of a, as a sales kit that we built in the, in the last few uh, weeks. And uh, so the barrier of the need, the barrier of uh, wasting the time, uh, sitting with the customer and moving to new technology does not exist anymore since the Corona. Very good. So uh, thank you for that. And Gadi, any additional uh, comment that you'd like to make? Sure. So I would say that the average onboarding of customers before this uh, situation would take, let's, let's say, weeks, while today Zim by itself onboards uh, multiple uh, uh, corporates per day. Uh, I think that today already 12 different corporates uh, were onboarded, uh, and, and the numbers are, are growing dramatically. Uh, paperless office is a world trend for already 30 years. Uh, but you always had this extra 10%, like bills of lading, bills of exchange, all kinds of trade documents which just cannot be digitized because of the lack of, of, of the networks. And suddenly the network is building itself. Of course, we have a great partner, uh, Zim, which is, is promoting it uh, as well and doing an excellent job. Uh, but of course, the situation is, is extremely helping. The only challenge is that we cannot say viral network anymore because of the current situation. So we need to find another terminology, but this is actually what is happening. Okay, so uh, that, that metric that you gave us is really impressive uh, from going from weeks per uh, implementation and onboarding to few per day. This is an order of magnitude. And I assume maybe in part, it can be attributed to maybe improved processes on your end, but uh, mostly, uh, I think it reflects the need in the market. Whenever there is a need, obviously red tape is cut and all that. Speaking of which, I'd like to change gears here and switch to the other topic, which is startup corporate collaboration. Now we have uh, uh, quite few startups presented in our audience today and the other corporates. And I know that one of the questions that keeps coming up is how does such a cooperation work between a startup and the, and the corporate, there is a perception that startups are very nimble and agile, can turn on a dime, while corporates, again, there is a perception that uh, they have much more red tape and the uh, regulation and stakeholders and legal and what have you. And uh, I would like to pick on your experience with that collaboration and ask you to share with us any lessons learned any challenges and the way they were overcome, maybe even a couple of anecdotes, if you are willing to share with us in that respect. So uh, I don't know, Gadi, since Ayal started before, Gadi, why won't you go first and provide your insight? Um, sure, so of course, on, on the, I would say that the only easy part was that, uh, of course, uh, Zim is located here. It, it's, from, from all the different carriers, of course, it's, it's uh, our closest neighbor. Uh, but, but to be honest, the reason why we started first was not because of that. It's because they caught up. Uh, they got the principle, they got the idea. They took a very uh, supportive uh, approach to the environment. 
uh, sorry, to the entire industry, which means that they didn't uh, try to take it all for themselves. Um, and yes, of course, we are a team of uh, currently 18, but we started as three uh, when we started uh, knocking on uh, Zim's doors. It took a few rounds of knocking before they said yes, but eventually uh, uh, it happened. Uh, so this is lesson number one. Uh, don't, don't stop uh, after you get a no. Try to find another way. Because in most cases, if you have a very good, uh, I would say, if your product is good enough and you do understand the market, so it's just a matter of time until it will be adopted. Uh, hopefully it will be a shorter time than your burn rate uh, allows you to keep. Uh, but in general, I would say that uh, you need to work with an endless amount of corporates in the early days because while for us, Wave is the only thing, which means that this is our only project, for YAL specifically and for Zim as a company, I guess that they have between a few dozens to a few hundreds of, of initiatives, not all of them, of course, with startups, which are happening in parallel. And we are, as much as we think that we are important, of course, we do have to understand that they have other things to attend. So it's not because they are slow, it's just because it's a completely different nature of business. So our approach was to throw as many, uh, as much bread as possible in the water and we are very happy that uh, a lot of it uh, came back and we were able to get the process moving. Okay, very good, thank you. And Eyal? Okay, so, you know, in Zim, um, we are meeting um, tens of startups. We have startups that we are meeting in the cyber industry, in the IO team, and in many other initiatives. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we choose very few to work with them, but when we choose to work with startups, we choose really to work and help them and push them, not only wait for them to do the work. Uh, Wave is a perfect example that um, we choose to work with Wave after we, we checked a few other um, platforms. And we, we, you know, we realized that the simplicity of Wave uh, is there really the, the power? Um, and we look at their solution as strategic, strategic solution uh, to our industry. So as Gadi said, we are not only trying to adapt it to ourselves, but we took a Zim uh, to be the, one of the leaders in moving this industry uh, to the future solution. Now, it was not easy. I can tell you that uh, that uh, um, at the first round that Gadi came and tried, he met some VPs and, and, and at management level, we decided that, no, we don't want to go. And then one day Gadi asked me to, to meet face to face with the CEO, it was the previous CEO. And during this meeting, there was a change that uh, uh, the decision was, yes, let's try to cooperate. Then we had the change uh, at a new CEO, and this the new CEO also brought it to the board of directors, and even we considered and we did invest in Wave. It's the first time ever that Zim invested in startup. Later on, we did it in another startup. And, and, uh, and the reason was that we wanted to make it a strategic platform, and we wanted to be the leaders. And so you have to understand that this startup came all the way up to the board of director of, of Zim. So you need, in order to succeed, you need two things. You need good sponsorship. The sponsorship for Wave is not only at my level, also at the CEO level. So the sponsorship came from the top. And then Wave all around cooperate very good with us. I can tell you that uh, my CTO spent hours with the Wave people, the R&D, to adapt and to develop the platform to, to be ready for enterprise solution and not only stand alone. Wave did receive the feedback from Zim and did adapt things that, that uh, we asked for. So this is a real good cooperation. Uh, um, I spent hours together with Gadi and with Jean and other from the company meeting customers together in Israel and abroad. So this is really becoming a, a strategic uh, cooperation. Uh, we have similar experience with others, but none of them strategic as much as WAVE, maybe one more strategic as, as WAVE. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, you do, you do business between people. So when the communication and you feel comfortable from both sides, 
with uh, the management of Wave and with the management of Zim, because they are small startup, but they are meeting VPs and CEO at Zim. And then you can do good business together. He's, he's doing business with good people and he got us by mistake, which means just to... <laughs> uh, yes, I do 100% agree with Eyal. We do business and we have a very good chemistry. I have to say that one of the things that really helped us is, as Eyal mentioned, which means that they pushed us also to the industry, even competitors. Um, even here in the, in the audience, there are some other uh, lines which Eyal spoke uh, specifically, which means that um, the Wave is a very unique, it's a network-based solution. And we found very good partners. Uh, we also have many partners in the banking industry, which are also supporting us there. It's a big challenge. In general, a startup is a big challenge, and we need and you need very good support. And uh, Zim definitely were able to to provide that, and we appreciate it a lot. Yeah, one of the things that we did do that uh, we engage our competitors um, to to see the platform, even to some of them to invest in Wave, uh, because we believe that in order to succeed, we need to, to build an ecosystem that will use the same platform and not uh, having, you know, ending with uh, three or four different platforms that um, you cannot uh, communicate between them. Uh, so this is the way we want to use uh, our um, uh, advanced solution is by being the first, but we are working very hard to engage also our competitors to the same solution in order to, to, to make it uh, the default platform of the carriers. Not only the carriers, by the way, but at least for the carriers. Okay, so thank you. This is very interesting and a couple of comments that I wrote to myself vis-a-vis -vis that, but I'd like to start uh, with a point you made, Eyal, that uh, Zim, as an exception, decided to invest in Wave. And by the way, well done, Gadi, on your persistency. I'm sure that the uh, other startups uh, on, the, on the line here in the audience, some of them at least, are going to call you to uh, ask for the recipe as to uh, how to make it happen. But just for proper disclosure, I will say that uh, Wave is also a member of the DOC's portfolio of companies. So in other words, the DOC is a proud shareholder uh, in Wave as well, alongside uh, with uh, Zim. Uh, so this is just uh, for disclosure. I would also like to mention a couple of other things. So I understand we have here a case of Zim in a way playing the role of a design partner, also trying to uh, have a say on uh, how to make the solution, the product better, obviously with the need of Wave to balance it with, a, with a, a making sure that these are things that the whole market could make use of. Uh, one of the questions this raises, however, is a uh, daddy for you uh, once you actually have a network as a yal said of 300 sales people promoting your solution how did you scale i mean you needed to train the 300 people uh, did you have the means and the capacity to do that the issue of scaling sounds like maybe overwhelming to an extent uh, first of all it's a problem of the sales team not of mine so uh... But, but in, in general, yes, it was a very challenging, uh, uh, it was a very challenging mission, which was managed by our uh, Chief Sales and Strategy Officer, Jean Flavian, which is somewhere in the audience over there. Um, and, and yes, it was very challenging, and we had to go between the different agencies. Of course, there was a strategy behind it. We didn't go one by one, uh, but creation of, of sales kits. Uh, Eyal, of course, was also very much involved in the entire process from, from the VPs and up to the, the last person. I have to say that uh, Eyal invested a lot of both personal uh, and uh, time, I mean, to, to, to make this happen. It's not, a, it's not a simple mission, but it's definitely possible. And uh, also one of the very positive things is that be before the corona, we used to travel to the different agencies and, and uh, train them over there. Now it's not necessary, which means that the coronavirus actually managed to eliminate many of our barriers, both the creation of the network, but also the fact that we don't need to travel anywhere and we can create webinars uh, just like here, but for sales teams. And this is what we are doing uh, in order to make it happen. 
Okay, great. And uh, so maybe a last comment and a question uh, to what uh, you mentioned before, Eyal. So the comment is on uh, the issue of uh, Zim promoting the wave solution, not only to complementing parties such as banks and others, but also in a way to competitors. Uh, I, I know, again, this is something of interest to other startups and other corporates. Usually the common wisdom is for the corporate to ask for exclusivity, at least for a period of time. And I think this is a great example of Zim seeing the, the bigger picture and understanding that for its own use, for its own benefit, uh, it better promote it to others as well because of the network effect uh, that, uh, that uh, both of you agreed exists in that solution. So this is something to note. And the, and the, and the question part, uh, uh, Eyal, this is for you. Uh, I know that, uh, that you are actually the sponsor or maybe the champion within uh, Zim, but even though Wave has your support and even the CEO support, there is still way to make in order to harness the business and make sure the business cooperates. So anything you can share with us about how does that work within Zim? How do you actually get the business side? And it could be a different business function depending on the solution of the startup. How do you get them to cooperate? Okay, before this, I want to comment about um, what you're talking about, the ecosystem, okay? Um, uh, the shipping industry um, is bleeding and losing money for many years. One of the reason is that on the operational side, um, the, we are not cooperating good enough. And uh, my belief, and not only mine, I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, most of the CIOs and CEOs of other uh, 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 shipping companies believe that we must be better building a better uh, operational standards uh, better cooperation on the operational side in order to stop bleeding and start also making better money. Uh, and that's why uh, we took uh, uh, the leadership um, of uh, pushing it to the full ecosystem, not only for us, because it's not useful uh, if not all the network is, uh, is using um, uh, this digital uh, bill of lading. Uh, as for how, you know, how to bring the business to work with you. It's not easy. It's not easy in any IT project, by the way, uh, that is not starting from business uh, demand and business leadership. So it's not, uh, the case here was not that the business came and said, look, we want uh, to move to electronic bill of lading, bring us the solution. Uh, so we went hand uh, by hand with some of the business people. Um, at first we had to, you know, get over the technology barrier to make the connectivity to the legacy to improve uh, the product uh, from Waveside. As when Gadi told you that it's moved from weeks to 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 minutes, uh, that's a must when you want to do a, a rollout. Um, and we worked very hard to involve the business. It was not easy. Uh, again, here I must say that the event of the Corona really helped us to pass this barrier of understanding how critical is the need. And the other way we did it is, is uh, with the CEO help, okay? We went to the CEO and, and, and uh, uh, he um, uh, you know, called a monthly meeting to review the implementation phase and uh, asking the business uh, for results. And when you succeed, to transfer it from IT technical project to a business project uh, with the focus of the CEO, then you pass the barrier and you get the involvement. Uh, it's not always easy, but usually in a successful project, you need to do this move. You need to bring it to the attention of the high level management and put it uh, uh, as a, one of the critical missions otherwise, it will, will always, you know, on the side because they have more important things to do on the day-to-day -day life. They are fighting the day-to-day -day life. Bringing new technologies is very difficult to the business. It's, it's taken out of the focus. So in order to bring it to the focus, you need to bring it from the top. Okay, so this is inspiring and thank you very much for sharing this with us. Uh, I would like, with your permission, I'm opening up here, as I promised, the Q&A 
uh, sections. So we have a few questions lined up already. Uh, let me go quickly. I see here something which is fairly a technical question. Let's get it out of the way. The uh, question is, how can we share the link of the video? Uh, uh, the, it's, it's in, uh, you should go to the website of Zim, uh, and uh, it's uh, there uh, when in the digital tools, uh, you can find the, the video also. Okay, very good. And there are a couple of comments here that the video is amazing. So again, good job, and I'm sure you will communicate it they are to whoever deserves the credit for that. Uh, okay. Uh, Looking at the question coming up, uh, Gadi, from a, an agency office, not a shipping uh, entity, not a carrier, but an agency office. And the question is, uh, taking these days conditions into consideration, how can Wave, uh, Wave solution change the most basic daily routines of an agency office, specifically uh, the release of cargo uh, which includes delivery order, presentation of OBL, U01, et cetera. So, so what's the message here to the agency office uh, within Wave Solution? Okay, so let's go. In general, what, break, what Wave brings to the table is the exact same, um, the exact same solution that email replaced a uh, normal mail, which means that instead of sending the documents or carrying the documents to customs and to, to other agencies, so you can submit them electronically on web. Now, the carriers will, which means that the OBL will most likely already be supported by the, the carrier or by some of the NVOs, uh, freight forwarders, sorry. Um, while other documents, so we are in process. Uh, just like we had to onboard Zim, for example, to have them issuing electronic uh, bills of lading on WAVE, we also need to go to many other issuers of different certificates, uh, like certificates of origin, certificates of inspection, uh, organic uh, food certificates, for example, is now a top priority for us because one of, the, uh, one of our early adapting uh, shippers uh, requires a digitization of such a certificate. It's, by the way, the only non, uh, based on their declaration, by the way, uh, it's the only certificate which is still in a paper format. So we need to learn the flow, the specific flow in order to know what is supported already and what will be supported soon. But uh, in very high level, you can reach a 100% email style user experience if you use Wave as a standalone, or it's just completely automatic if you're integrating it to your own services. So you can reach 100% autonomous goods release and documents spread to the rest, to the different agencies in Shaolami. Okay, so there, there, there is a, something I comment about Shaolami, which is the community uh, system here in Israel, because we have some other uh, out of country audience as well. Uh, but maybe still on the document uh, issue, another question is how will negotiable bills of lading be handled where the document needs to be presented for LC, for letter of credit negotiations. So I'm really happy to say that yes, the banks are considered to be the slowest to adapt, but we have actually started a banking campaign on Monday. And so far we already have eight signups uh, within the banking industry. We're, of course, we're talking about the leading uh, organization in the world without getting into names. Uh, banks are one of the biggest, uh, are suffering the most from paper because a normal shipper will also have the ability to use Waybill or, or Telex release and some other solutions. A bank can only use negotiable bills of lading. Wave, of course, was originally designed especially to solve the negotiable documents, which means that it's fully supported. And we now, together with our carrier, uh, uh, together with Zim uh, and some of our industry partners, we are going to the banks and onboarding them as well not because they do us a favor, we actually do them a favor because trade finance and letters of credit is, is almost a dying industry. And now uh, we are helping it to dramatically reduce cost overheads and be much more relevant again. We have excellent results in that aspect as well. Okay. Uh, Noah, since we're approaching the 40 minutes, I'm going to continue until you, you actually hold me. There are, there are uh, quite few additional questions I'll try to maybe cluster them together. Uh, yeah, let's so, continue for two more minutes. Yeah, okay. We already know that she knows how to mute you. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, 
Gadi, a very quick one. Let's not waste the time. Yes. Uh, a very quick one uh, is uh, whether, whether a, a wave is already selling to other shipping companies. I think the answer is obvious here, but uh, why won't you relate to that? Eyal personally ensured that uh, we will be approaching many other carriers. Uh, yes, I can already tell you that uh, both MC, uh, which is the most public one, but three other carriers are now in the late stage of their pilots. And at least one of them invested in Wave, same as him. Yes. Okay, very good. Very good. So uh, again, uh, an issue to the merits of the trade documents. Uh, for Wave uh, Automatic or Autonomous Onboarding, how do you ensure that whoever signs the document uh, uh, has the authority to actually bind the company to the rights and obligations of the legal document. How do you ensure the, oh yeah, if I understand right, the authentication and the authority of the person who signed to actually represent the company and bind it to the different uh, uh, obligations and rights? So your, your first instructions, uh, instructions was to be quick and getting into a very deep legal discussion, of course, is not easy. But of course, uh, every user within the net, within the Wave network, confirms by installing this application, by joining the network, that 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 he did it under the authority. Now, when you exchange contacts, uh, then you already you can verify that the one who gave you the contact has the author authority to do so. Uh, it's very similar, by the way, to when a bank provides you with a digital token to to approve a. a um, wire transfers, it's, it's very relevant for the B2B world, same principle, and it, it's not a barrier at all, uh, and, and it's 100% covered okay. for all the different parties. Last question, yeah. if you're, last, last question, Gadi, if you are comfortable sharing the, with the audience the charging scheme, I mean the, the price list or the charging mechanism for the, for the electronic uh, trade documents. Uh, I can say that using WAVE is dramatically less expensive than the direct expenses on paper, which means that they're taking out risk and frauds and document loss. This I'm not calculating, but the direct expense on the documents on the use of paper uh, is, which means that the ROI starts from the first shipment. Uh, but of course, leave, leave us Israelis the ability to negotiate. Uh, we enjoy it a lot. Very good. Before I wrap up the session, uh, the right to say maybe the last comment or sentence. Eyal, anything you'd like to add? And Gadi, we get to you as well, just in case you need. Yeah, I mean, you have anything? No need, specifically? Um, so what I want to say that uh, um, for the startups, uh, make sure that you bring a um, relevant solution to the industry. And uh, don't give up uh, when you hear the no. Uh, um, and uh, find yourself a sponsor, a high-level sponsor, in order to succeed uh, working in a large corporate. Thank you, Gadi. Uh, what Eyal said, just uh, slightly better, uh, which means that you know, I fully agree with him. As long as you have a good partner, you don't work with, we don't work with Zim, we work with people who work at Zim, and you know, you, you, need, you need the right, uh, I would say, value proposition presented to the right person who understands it. It takes time. What is very clear for me in my mind, in many cases, is not clear at all on the other side. Uh, I find it, it's almost impossible to succeed on the first attempt uh, because it takes time for things to sink. And, uh, but, but eventually it works. So. I think we all agree at the end of the, at the, end of the day, it's, business, it's people doing business with people. I think this was also mentioned by, by Eyal, you alluded to that. So this is something we're all in agreement with. I'd like to thank very much, thank you very much. First of all, Eyal and Gadi, the panel members, I'd like to thank the okay. audience. Uh, I will mention that the, the recording of this uh, session will be available online as well. And uh, I would like to also welcome, extend an invitation to whoever would like to attend. We have another exciting use case coming up next Thursday, same time. And uh, everybody here on the line is invited to attend as well. With that, I will wish everybody a good and safe weekend. Thank you very much. Also, thank you to uh, Nir, Michal, and of course, Noah, 
who uh, made this whole uh, session possible. These are uh, the team uh, of, uh, of the doc. Again, thank you very much, everybody, and hopefully we'll see you next week as well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye, thank you. Happy holidays, of course. Bye, thank you.